At his home in East Mauritius, local historian, author, and bottle collector George Fisher is creating a rubbing of a bottle from Brooklyn that dates back to the 1860s. Fisher's interest in historical bottles was sparked in the early 80s when he discovered his first bottle during a walk on the beach. I was out walking on the barrier beach at Fire Island, parked my car at Smith Point and headed west. And I guess I was three or four miles from the car and a little object on the sand caught my eye and it was a little cobalt blue bottle. Um, I reached down and picked it up and took a look at it and uh, kind of amazed and curious. And I brought it home with me and a few of my friends had a certain amount of knowledge about antiques and I asked them about it and it turned out it was a bottle that was made in the 1890s. As he built his collection by scouring the local beaches and flea markets, Fisher decided to focus on Long Island bottles. He began working on a 15-year project with Don Weinhardt, author of A Directory of Long Island Soda, Beer, and Mineral Water Bottles and Bottling Companies, 1840 to 1970, to release a second edition and catalog over 2,100 bottles. I found that uh, the history on Long Island went back um, with beverages uh, as early as 1840. At that time, Brooklyn was one of the largest cities in the country and was positively the forefront of um, everything beverages. They, they had a large drinking population, beer production, uh, soda and mineral water. And as people came out to Long Island on trips or to settle, uh, they brought many of the products and habits that they had acquired with them. And by the mid-1840s to mid-1850s, we had a couple of um, major um, Long Island companies. This bottle is um, Tassie, which was an early uh, mineral water company in Brooklyn from the uh, mid-1850s. Uh, the provenance is it came out of a pit in Boreham Hill, where it probably rested for the best part of 150 years. Uh, and I bought it from a friend of mine who dug this bottle. Uh, value, there's only two or three Tassies known and probably in the $1,500 to $2,000 range. Fisher's most recent book, Long Island Medicine Bottles, was published in 2008 and features bottles from his collection that date back as far as 1839. All of the medicine bottles here are handmade. Um, they all required a glass blower uh, and were fabricated one by one painstakingly. Um, the group on the top shelf is J.S. Seabury. It dates to 1839. Uh, he worked primarily out of Jamaica, Long Island. He figured out a way to make a uh, artificial substitute for indigo as a laundry bleach. And that launched his career and his um, fairly enormous wealth. Um, some of the other bottles, uh, uh, there's uh, a honey balm, there's a, a couple of Brant's uh, Indian balsam bottles. The titles themselves are fascinating. These bottles are subject to the same considerations that many other antiques and artifacts are. So condition is important relative scarcity, color, um, age. Now an older bottle would be produced in far fewer numbers and therefore the remaining copies are scarcer. Um, early Pontal bottles can range from a couple hundred dollars up to many, many thousands of bottles. Uh, dollars. Um, they had a Brooklyn Pontal bottle that went for over $15,000 in auction. I'm still old school and use inches rather than millimeters. Having collected over 1,000 bottles, Fisher is now more focused on preserving local history. I'm thrilled less now to, to actually possess the bottle, but I want to be able to do a rubbing. I want to be able to take a photograph. I want that to be part of the uh, knowledge that we've assembled here. This has nothing to do with uh, me as an author or anything except posterity. Um, I'd like to feel that the collection was held together as a study collection that supports the research. And I would like hope very much that that happens. From East Mauritius, this is Michael Corrales.